<clears throat> also, just a quick note before uh, this episode starts today. Obviously, this is kind of like a fast forward in the comp climb series. Um, but me and Maddie were talking and decided to release this video now just because it kind of is it's kind of surrounding like the hype of the event rather than releasing it sort of chronologically, uh, just so it makes a bit more sense. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed today's video. People from the event are here now. Yeah, I bet. Ah. Should we just keep the video rolling and not cut it and just, if we mess up, we we'll just. Uh, I can't uh, have that big file, so I think. Okay, okay, okay. Look at Silver while you're drinking that. So cute. Silver is so cute. Meow, meow. I love Silver. Oh. Hey everyone, my name is Zach, and this is what my wife. <laughs> Hey everyone, my name is Zach, and this is my wife, Maddie. I'm a 22 year old competitive boulder from Canada, currently living near Frankfurt, Germany. Welcome back to the Comp Climb training series, where I record all of my training, provide in-depth analysis of every session, and just chat about climbing with an emphasis on competition. In today's episode, we're finally here at the Jackalope event. This is our first competition in a while. Um, we haven't competed since the North American Cup in Vail. Maddie and I did an event at the beginning of the year while we were like visiting Canada, and it's kind of like, so it's called the Tour Block Series. It's a local competition series in Canada that we have. And what they were doing with the prizes this year is they were, instead of giving out cash prizes, which they usually do for the finalists, they were giving out um, golden tickets to the winners of like the four stops all throughout Canada. And what this golden ticket was is it's like an all expense paid package to uh, fly like all these winners out from all different parts of Canada to Montreal for this Jackalope event. Uh, it's purely just a fun event um and so for us because it's a fun event we don't really we didn't really want to train for it we don't usually train for fun events uh we just train for the things that like really like matter for selection or uh if they're like the big like world cups or international events so um for this one i actually it wasn't a good time at all for me like when we went to the tour de block earlier this year i wasn't sure we would actually take the prize um, I signed up because it, was, it actually fit really well into my schedule and I need a little bit of on siting training so I wanted to do the competition. But then I signed up and I was like, maybe we could go, like maybe I could just extend my season a little bit. So I ended up extending my entire season by a month. It wasn't, um, I wasn't very happy about that, like I wanted my season to be over after the World Championships. But um, I did it anyway and I'm really glad I did because it was really, it was a really good event. Um, but Zach, uh, he had to, you know, take some time. It, it, it didn't, it wasn't quite as intrusive for Zach to fit this competition in. Yeah, like it, I, I, I wanted to do the event, but what I kind of wanted to do more was have a nice extended period of time, like five, six, seven months of just training, which I haven't had the opportunity to do this in such a long time. And so it was kind of like a bit of like, ah, I want to do this event, but I really just want to train. But like the circumstances that I just described, like, you know, all expenses trip back to Canada, you can't really pass that up, especially because we got to take the advantage to uh, take the opportunity to come visit family as well. Like here we're at my house right now. Well, yeah, they offered to just buy a one-way ticket for us to go to Montreal, and then they bought a one-way ticket for us to go from Toronto back to Frankfurt. So it actually worked out really well. So yeah, it, like even though it wasn't necessarily ideal for our schedules, we decided to fit it in. And uh, yeah, so we went and competed and let's go check out what happened. So for qualifiers, we had uh, 30 boulders. It actually, when they described what qualifying was going to be like, it actually was a little bit inaccurate. It said that we had to do all the boulders, they all counted. But when we showed up, it was only the top five. Um, so that was actually really relieving. I, it was a lot of climbing if you have to do all the boulders. So it's nice to just have to pick top five, like hardest boulder you can do and just get those done. Um, so you have two and a half hours and the round started at 6 p.m. which is a little bit strange for us as well and meanwhile like we're coming from frankfurt where we're six hours ahead and we we got to canada like uh you know five days earlier so we were just getting at the point where we we're adjusting 6 p.m was really late for us so i ended up doing all five of the boulders i needed that i ended up handing in at the end of the day right in the first like 45 minutes um but i obviously there are three um qualifying heats. So we were in the first one on uh, the 25th of August and the next one was on the 26th, the day of finals. And so you can't really judge uh, who's who you're competing against. You don't really know. They don't post the registrants and they um, and there's two other heats that you're not going to be there for. So I was pretty sure I was in, but I wanted one more boulder um, to do. 
but I couldn't, I, I spent maybe another hour just trying to get one more boulder, but I was like pretty sure I was in, so I wasn't super motivated, but then I was still trying and it was getting frustrating. So I ended up handing it in with the boulders I did right away. And well, uh, meanwhile, you, you had a pretty good start too. I did, yeah. Like, you, like this is a boulder you did here early on, this, uh, Run and jump. I think you might have been like the first one to do it. Yeah, well, running these are, are like always notorious for having lots of falls. And I got the second attempt because I'm like, that's like my strong suit. Um, so yeah, I, I was like getting it done really, really fast. I did everything within one or two attempts. How does that feel? That, that's my strong suit. I don't have many strong suits, but that's one of them. Did you have beta after you got it or did you have to figure it out on the wall? I thought I would be able to just like put my butt on the wall like go up right but it was too it was too hard to do that so i did pick that out on the wall oh, it's pretty it's solid eh and then meanwhile you can see uh i'm getting like a couple sends in the background there I had kind of the opposite around of Maddie, where I had like a bit of a shaky start. Uh, my warm up kind of got messed up. I lost track of what bowlers I was doing. Uh, and then Maddie, I saw Maddie's like going and topping some things, and then I kind of flipped the switch. And then I went and I started setting bowlers really fast. And I started like doing, I think the tops that I got, I all did within three tries in the qualifiers. So this boulder that I'm on right now, Zach did in, in like three attempts, right? Uh, yes, it was, yeah, I felt like the last move here is a couple. So th times. this hold that I'm holding right now is so bad. I actually, like I, I'm gonna try to match it in a couple seconds. And yeah, like I just fall immediately. I had no friction on it. Whereas Zach was just like, he like held it and like just, he just stuck as if it was like a cramp or a jug or something. Yeah. Yeah, was, yeah was, I don't I don't really know what like the difference is with that kind of movement honestly with like kind of just the friction based climbing um, but yeah I managed to get a quick send of this one and then I just kind of knocked off uh, basically the top five hardest boulders uh, except for the last one the last one was like this really hard slab that nobody was really trying and when you're watching the scramble around of course as well as like you see what all your competitors are doing and you have an idea of what you sort of think you need to do to make finals and when you've been doing these sort of comps for as long as Maddie and I have been doing, you can, obviously you'll make a mistake every now and then, but you can have like a, almost pretty much a certain idea of like if you're gonna make it or not. Like well, it, yeah, especially in Canada where we just know the field so well. Yeah. Like there were a couple of Americans that showed up, um, but they were all in this heat. Like most of the, the strong people were in this heat. So we had a good idea. We ended up trying 30 together at the end, uh, right Thir before yeah. I handed my scorecard. It was very hard. I, we both could barely start it. And then, you know, like it just wasn't happening. It wasn't worth the, the time in qualifiers. Yeah. So I, I had finished after like an hour and a half. I did like the top five hardest except for that one. And then, yeah, gave up on 30. And then meanwhile, Maddie is like, because we're in heat one, she's, she's a little nervous. Like I thought I had a pretty good idea that she would be good, but she ended up getting like the send, send that she needed probably within like an hour. Oh yeah, like <laughs> like half an hour even. But yeah, I kept trying just to be safe, but I, I just, I was like not motivated. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna risk it. I'm just gonna, you know, I've got two more heats, but I'm pretty sure I'm good. And I ended up qualifying fifth, which is like a little bit lower than I uh, was comfortable, but it was fine. Yeah, that's kind of the nature of scramble qualifying rounds as well as like, because it, it's called scramble for a reason. You just have to go and do a bunch of bowlers and it's chaos. It's like, who do I watch? Who do I pay attention to? And then you got to focus on your own climbing as well. And then if you slip at the start, you got to go sit back in line. It is not a fun format. And it's just like kind of a format where you want to go and get it over with. And so uh, like oftentimes we have to really make sure that we don't pay attention to the result of a scramble round. It's like, sure, she's in fifth, but it's not a very good indicator of what's going to happen when it comes down to the ISO format. So it's like, okay, you made it through the finals. That's kind of all you need to worry about with the scramble round. So speaking of finals, the format of finals is really yeah, weird. Yeah. It's not like any other final you'd ever be, uh, you'd ever go to. Um, you actually get to climb with two of your competitors. You get 10 minutes on each boulder and you have a team. So you get half the finalists go in, are on your team. And I think they split it up first, third and fifth go together. And then second, um, fourth and sixth go together. I think they call it rush format. Yeah, so you get 10 minutes and you all like kind of take turns uh, trying a boulder. Um, and you get to watch each other and you can even give each other beta if you want. And uh, the... Yeah, keep talking. And uh, so it's a little bit strange when uh, when you can, you know, see the beta. You know, I'm extremely distracted. I can't do this right now. What is happening? 
Why? Hi, buddy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's Enzo. <laughs> what was he doing? He's being cute. Oh, my goodness. Enzo. <laughs> Enzo, Enzo. So, yeah, it, it is a funky format. Um, it's, uh, it's, it was kind of like 10 on, 10 off. Did you already say that? So we're trying, we're trying the boulder for 10 minutes. So you're in two groups of three. Um, and what they do is they put the first group of three people on the on the boulder one for 10 minutes. And you kind of just all work it together. And it's kind of- okay, Yeah, I already said all this. Oh, you already said that? Yeah. Okay. And so at first, at first uh, glance, it's like 10, like five minutes is already what you get for one person. And so if you were to double that for two people, that's what you kind of wouldn't think, you would think that 10 minutes is. And so, but then you add a third person in, I was like nervous. I was like, this is going to be like no time at all. It you was know? actually quite a bit of time. It actually la it lasted way longer than you thought it did. Yeah. Cause every like you only take a couple of, like everyone's only attempting for, you know, a few seconds. And when you're, when you're in your five on five off, you're resting for most of that five minutes in the first place. Yeah. So when you're just watching better, sometimes you actually gotta like, get on the wall faster than you would normally, because you just kind of go in a line. And once you're turning, you just get on the wall. So sometimes it actually doesn't work out very well where you just are kind of uh, obliged to get on the wall. Um, yeah, but anyway, you'll notice like the, these other couple dudes uh, climbing with me right now, like this is my group. So we're all working it together. We get to watch, talk about the beta. And, and yeah, it is actually kind of a fun format. I actually enjoyed it. I was a bit skeptical at first, but it was a lot of fun. And you saw Maddie uh, top the first boulder. Uh, she did it in two tries. Yeah, so that's actually a case where I actually saw the first person that went out actually flashed it. So I tried her beta right away because I was like, well, she just did it that way. She actually tried to static to the first hold. So I tried it, but I undershot it. And I, I didn't sequence to static it, but I did it anyway because that's what she did. Mm. Um, so I had to correct it. So I ended up getting a second attempt. And and that's kind of like a, a funky thing with this format as well, as especially when you have two groups of three. So this bullet, for example, here I'm trying uh, M1. First of all, it took me, so, I'm, realizing, I'm realizing now that this is a really potent weakness of mine is this toe catch move. Uh, this is, I, I've been becoming quite aware of this and you can see it took me a lot of tries to do it. I finally do it about halfway through and I mess up the middle here and I'm not able to do it again. Uh, Maddie's like weakness, her big weakness that she needs to work on are her paddles. And so now I'm realizing my version of her paddles are my toe catches. Well, that's funny because this boulder was supposed to be a paddle, but mm -hmm. it ended up actually going static for most people. You can see I'm kind of just campusing up this thing. Um, but another thing about this, this format was you actually get like quite a bit of rest. And uh, so, you know, if you flash your second attempt, your first boulder, uh, you've got, you know, the rest of that 10 minutes plus another 10 minutes of the next group going. So when I got to this boulder, I was actually completely cold. And it was about like, you know, 9 p.m. So it was actually kind of cold out, like in the first place. It was windy, it was cold. Yeah, so I'm like, I thought I was about to fall right here. Like I'm, my hands are like, I'm pumped now because I'm cold. And the girl before me just flashed it, so I was all sorts of pressure. Even though I'm stuck at the finish hold here, I'm still like, I'm not out of the woods. And then finally I stab the foot and I get it. But mm. that was, even though I flashed it, that was absolutely the hardest end of the round for me. So yeah, now we're moving on to my second boulder, uh, the slab. And for those who remember, in the last Jackalope at Virginia Beach that uh, I competed in, I got absolutely annihilated by the slab and I probably rapid fired that boulder about 30 times and just kept falling all over it. Uh, now we have a much nicer contrast in today's jackalope, uh, or well, a couple days ago, where I'm able to flash this lab, thankfully, and not make a fool of myself like I did last time. I actually was, I was pretty happy to see this lab. Uh, I find that sort of like the more patient slabs where you need to be really, uh, you know, balancey and it's like kind of all in the feet and there's like no way you can use your hands at all to do this lab is where I really struggle. But this slab where it's kind of like more like precision is the uh, the main element of this boulder. Like the the beginning was like, okay. And then the the crux of the boulder really re revolved around jumping to this crimp. I find I'm actually not too bad at that style of climbing. So I was able to flash this boulder, which was really relieving. So speaking of flashing boulders, I thought I was going to flash this boulder. So this is my first mm -hmm. attempt here. I actually get really close and then yeah, no dice. So this actually took maybe five, maybe even six attempts. Um, and uh, so yeah, she ends up doing it in like her fifth try or something. And now the footage you're about to see, uh, so Maddie, Maddie tops this boulder, and then next up is me on M3. And we got her, uh, her parents to film me, and so the crowd was massive, and they didn't get the best of spots. So you're about to see some super ghetto footage. It was all the footage we have of M3, um, but it does a trick. <laughs>
So that boulder, as you can probably tell, was quite the, the battle. I, I was just starting to learn the move and I'm like, okay, this feels like a pretty good try as I was going mid move. And then I hit this cramp and I'm like, okay, I, I, I kind of overshot it and fell into hold. I'm falling, it's fine, I'll, you know, I'll do it next try. And then all of a sudden I'm like, wait, I'm not falling, what? And my fingers just decided to stay on the wall. And it's that crazy uh, moment in time where you're like, okay, I guess I'm just not falling. And I realized I can save it. So I go and grab the start hold and I got this crazy helicopter thing going. Probably the ugliest bit of climbing I've ever done in my life, but I was trying really hard and I made it work. And then after all of that, I was like so tired to do the shoulder move. You can see that my shoulder sagged all the way out and it was like just desperation, like full fight mode, all sort of, you know, any sort of elegant, elegant climbing has gone out the window and I'm just trying to get to the top of this boulder. And then this hold is good and I got a little ahead of myself and had some fun with the crowd uh, before I got to the finish hold. Um, so unfortunately we didn't get footage of my fourth boulder. Boy. Yeah, the fourth <laughs> boulder is actually really cool. It was a paddle, which is like a real paddle. It was my, uh, a bit of my weakness, but I did get it. Four of the competitors in my group, in my, um, in my final topped every single boulder. Yeah. So it came down to attempts for us. So I did need every single boulder, every single zone, um, which is always a bit stressful, but I couldn't actually tell what the other group was doing. So, um, I didn't know it was that close. But yeah, I did come in third based on um, attempts. And we we actually haven't like seen the results anywhere, so we don't even know how. Close I don't know. It. Yeah, I don't know how many. Attempts. <laughs> it just came down to attempts. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> if I needed one less to make it. You know, I I know the girl in my group came in one ahead of me, so I don't know exactly how many attempts. Probably like two or three. And so now we're moving into my fourth boulder. Um, I was actually going to this boulder with a bit of a, I guess, a good mind. It turned out to be a good mindset, but it was dangerous because. I actually thought that I was the only one to do the third boulder going into this boulder. The, the crowd was loud, but it was almost like because there was so much climbing going on, it was actually really hard to get a read on it like you could in a normal final. So I thought all I had to do was top this boulder. So I had like very little pressure because this boulder looked very doable and I had 10 minutes to do it. I said, you know what? I just can throw myself at this boulder and I'm going to do it in 10 minutes. I could really, I had a really good feeling about the boulder. And so I was not prepared. I was not going to this boulder like trying to really uh, nail down my attempts. But it turns out both Joe and Charlie, who are on the podium here, and Joe's third and Charlie's second, had done the third boulder and had the same amount of tops as me. We all did the last three, and I didn't know that. And so I actually, I so I managed to flash the last boulder as you can see, but I didn't realize how important and clutch the flash was. Um, so same sort of thing. Yeah, like we got three tops and it came down to attempts. I actually don't know how many attempts. Like I don't know if that flash was like the one attempt I needed or if I had like a couple to work with. But it was funny that by thinking I had as many tries as I needed to to kind of just throw myself at this boulder, it took pressure off and I was able to just climb a bit more loosely and confidently and flash the boulder as a result, which uh, in turn got me the win. You can't like obviously force your mind to do some things, but you can play games with it and trick it. And so I need to try and recreate that feeling by just, just like, I don't know, like, you know, Kind of like using the mindset I've talked about where like obviously yourself too and like trusting your, your body is good. But when the nerves just start to overpower you, it's all about playing games with yourself to, uh, to trick your mind. And this is like a good example of a tool I can use, I guess, is just to, I don't know, think I have an unlimited attempt and just climb like that. And then it will work out like it did today. So Zach ended up winning, of course, and I came in third. Yeah, I haven't uh, managed to get a win of a comp in a while, so it felt good. And like I said, the crowd was like epic. This was just such a fun event. So glad we did it. You know, we were going back and forth a bit, um, but the whole experience was just great. Like, you know, thanks to uh, Jackalope and Alley Up and everyone that put on the event. It was a big success, a lot of fun. We'll definitely be coming up to more Jackalopes in the future, um, especially because we'll probably be living in Canada next year and it'll be very accessible. And yeah, it was just a great time.